Heather Brown Harding here. Today we're going to talk about a laser scan con bubble microscope. The one I have here is the Zeiss LSM880 with Aries Scan, but other companies will have a very similar setup. To start off with, we have an inverted microscope. Because we are a core facility, it gives us the most flexibility to have an inverted microscope. Um, and then everything is built off of there for the confocal microscope. So one of the big differences between a wide field and a laser scanning microscope is the scan head that we have over here. So behind me we have a large laser bench. The light from the lasers comes in through fiber optics, comes in through here, and there's an actual gallows mirror within that. It comes up into the objective, it scans across our sample, like the name says, laser scanning microscope. It is then collected through the objective, comes back through here, and we have our PMTs in here. This particular variety has two PMTs and a 32 gas detector array. Furthermore, we also have the Airy scan module at the very back, which we can look at later. And this is a quasi-super resolution module to be able to observe our cells with. So now we're going to look close in to all the components um, on the laser bench as well as the laser bench. Below us is where we actually have the lasers. And below that we have a real-time computer system that relays back and forth with our normal computer. And then as we come up, you'll see this stack right here. And it, it controls our CO2 so that we can control our CO2 generally 5% from mammalian cells, as well as our temperature module so that we can keep it at a happy 37 degrees Celsius for our mammalian cells. This is bubbled through water so that it stays humid and we don't have evaporation when we're doing live cell imaging. And to the right, we have our HXP120, a metal halide light source so that we can look at the cells through the eyepieces because we can't look at we can't look at our samples with lasers. Behind it, we have a variety of power sources um, for our stage as well as for the general system and our um, definite focus, etc. So those are all generally on. And then depending on if you're doing live cell imaging is if you turn on this stack right here. Moving over, we have a joystick. We have a fully automated microscope system. So we move our stage around back and forth with the joystick, and we can change the speed by pressing F1 right here. Then moving over, we have our fine focus and coarse focus, as you find on any inverted microscope. And coming up, you can see that we have a box around the microscope. This is specifically to maintain an environment if we're doing live cell imaging. Otherwise, it's not necessary to have it. I'm opening up all the pieces so that we can actually get to the microscope. So up here is our transmitted light arm. You can see that we, it's a laser-based system. This is our laser safety. We grab it by here to bring it back. This way we won't knock out the condenser. When we have it back, the microscope lasers will not fire because we don't want you to be able to get the laser in your eye. So if your arm is back, your laser won't turn on. On this, you can see our condenser here, as well as if you look right here, we have our polarizer for doing DIC. We have this on so that we can use our LSM TPMT. This is our transmitted light PMT so that we can do our quasi DIC images along with our fluorescent images. I find this very helpful in seeing the health of the cells. Are they spread out like they should be or are they rounded up? As well as things like plants, we can easily see cell walls using this. As I said, the stage is totally motorized as well as the objectives. And then we can move on our laser scan head. Our lasers actually are coming in right through here with our optics coming into the scan head, going to our sample, coming back, and being dispersed with variable dichromatic mirrors to the different PMTs. Or we can have it bypass that and go all the way back to the Airy scan, which is a 32 hexagonal array, 
that allows us to have um, better resolution than we would normally have with a confocal microscope. And finally, um, if we come over here past the air table, we have a touchscreen system. Most modern microscopes will have these these days. Here we have our touchscreen that controls all the motorized parts of our microscope. In the home screen, it tells us different things about the objectives, um, etc., all going down. And then we press the microscope, and this is where we actually control the microscope. First, we have objectives in which we can change the objectives for, for this. If we're going from a dry objective to immersion objective, we actually have it drop down and ask you, um, have you done this to ensure that we don't get oil or water on a dry objective? If you don't want to do that, you can press back, or if that's what you actually wanted to do when you cleaned up, press done, and it will rise back up into place. Under this, we also have our reflectors. We have our pole for us to be able to look at our DIC. We have GFP, DS Red, and DAPI. Although we have the ability to image in far red, we do not have a far red cube because we're imaging through the PMT and humans cannot see in the far red channel. And finally, in this we have a light path where you can change where the light is going. Um, but generally it's much easier to do this via the software on the computer for a confocal microscope. Finally, on this, we have our coarse and fine focus, so that once we have our sample where we want it, we can actually do our focus adjustment from here or in the software, and we don't have to leave sitting in front of the computer.